Hey guys, this is Alex from AR Design. Uh, today we are here with Josh from Fix It Sticks, and we've been putting off a video on how to mount level your scope. And Josh and I bumped into each other at a event the other day, and I was like, shit, you wanna come by and film this video with us? Absolutely. <laughs> So uh, you're from Fix-It Sticks, and if people don't know what Fix-It Sticks are, they are beautiful kits of tools, uh, compact tools for gunsmithing, um, field maintenance, whatever, but their torque limiter uh, heads are the most attractive of the kits. Please tell us about your torque limiters. So we have a variety of torque limiters that we use. Some of them are dedicated to a set poundage, so 65 inch pounds in this case here. Other kits have a more universal torque limiter depending upon what it is that might be a little bit more versatile and give you a little bit more stretch out of that kit in particular. So what this will allow us to do in this case here is to not only do the base screws and torque to the proper spec that Leupold's asking for in the case of this scope, but also our top screws and make sure that that optic will be properly set per the manufacturer to give you the most optimal performance. Awesome, so what kit do you have in front of you? This is our works kit. So this is the standard works kit, which comes with four dedicated limiters, a 15 inch pound, a 45 inch pound, the 25 and 65 that you see over here. It comes with the proprietary stick tool that we utilize with that, and then a handful of electroless nickel plated bits so from Torx and Allens, we also include two brass rods for cleaning, chamber clearing, an A2 sight adjuster for your AR-15 variants, things like that, a brass scraper, an 830 seconds threaded adapter. So any kind of gun cleaning chamber tools can be mated in with our package awesome. to work with that. Small brush for just cleaning debris off, pick scraper, um, a plastic punch so it's non-marring. Mm -hmm. So if we do have to tap on something, we have a standard punch, which is actually sized for being a Glock Armors tool as well. A bolt carrier scraper with firing pin. A castle nut wrench for if your buffer tube happens to come loose. And on the other side, we offer a choke tube wrench for shotgun, a pry bar with some nut drivers, a Glock front sight tool, a 1911 bushing wrench, and then a half inch quarter adapter socket, which is gonna cover most of your other larger uh, scope bases, more of the tactical, you know, orientation like that. Yeah, so my night force rings that exactly. I run, those are half inch drive, so. Half inch and 65, 65 and pounds. Perfect, that's the setup right there. So, and for this scope in particular, this loop hold, um, it's 15 inch pounds on the scope rings themselves. 20, 25. Or 25, sorry, 25 on the scope rings and then 65 across the base. The base, and there's a lot of them. So um, if, you've, if you've never leveled a scope, I really, really enjoy the Badger Ordnance Dead Level. Uh, it has these two knobs here to uh, adjust forward and aft elevation to the actual Picatinny rail. Um, you don't actually have to go and zero, you know, uh, level your rifle and put it in, a, in, a, in a, a level gun vise. You can do everything on this little uh, uh, Badger Ordnance Dead Level mount. But you're going to hear me swear today because we're in the <laughs> conference room and the conference table has some flex to the table and everything is awesome when there's flex to a table. So we're just gonna get the base mounted loosely. Oh, that guy. It's up to you if you wanna. So that one's bigger. That one is much larger. Let's use that and Oh, what guy. size is that? I don't know. T25. T25. So we're gonna use the, all of the fix-it stick parts. 25. These scopes. And we're doing two scopes today. So we're doing a loop hold on a loop hold cantilever mount. And then we have a primary arms and these worn uh, rings uh, to show another little feature uh, on the next um, the next rifle, rifle setup. On the next rifle setup, what uh, what other little cool gadgets Fix It Six has? So we're gonna tighten these down. Those these will be finger tight quarter turn. I'm not gonna bother uh, torque specking these down to the dead level. Um, I'm also not gonna care if I lose my level right now because I'm probably gonna blow it a few <laughs> times anyway. So yeah, five bolts on this cantilever mount. It's a lot. I didn't know that loophole was German. I was not aware. No, it's a German engineering joke. 
for over engineering a scope base for an LPVO. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, six, six horizontal bolts for this is a little excessive. All to 65 inch pounds. All. And I'm sure we have to go from front to back to middle to back to make sure they're all in tension. Okay, anyway. Close enough. Close enough. And this is going on at SBR. Uh, one of the associates here at AR Designs going on an SBR. Or is that a 16 inch gun? Okay, so it's going on a 16 inch gun. So we don't have to be too, too specific. So we'll start with just getting these tightened down a little bit. If you guys have never zeroed a scope, level the scope, I like to, I'm not gonna lie, I like to keep my fingers on them so that I don't go too far. Uh, I don't close the gaps on either side, but I like to just finger tight them, finger tight them down just to start until they touch and make sure that the gap on either side of the scope rings are equidistant. Luckily this one's like not horrible, huh? How's that side look? Pretty even. Pretty even. So if you guys are doing this for the first time, you always do cross bolt pattern. So when we do go into actual torques, torquing it down, we'll go this side to this side, jump back and forth. You just keep doing X's until it tightens it down. Um, I have a star it bubble level here, making sure that the bubble level on the dead level is level. Um, this is about where I want to keep the glass. It's got a little bit of a gap between the uh, manufacturing marks of the tube, the tube spec, and it's not all the way at the rear. And since this is going on an AR platform, I'm not too worried about the length of pull on the, on the actual cantilever because you have all that uh, all that play on an AR. So right now the bubble is off. Um, I have a brass a brass hammer here. <laughs> I do use that on some of the larger um, some of the larger glass that I have. So we want to um, we want to tap this guy down a little bit. That was a little too much. I like. I like plastic mallets. Almost perfect. That's good. Oh no, see it just moved a lot. So I like to use a, a nylon mallet. It's just really easy for me to gently adjust incrementally where So I like to go perfect out the gate. One of the things that will happen when you're zeroing glass is as you tighten them down, you will have to tighten one side more than the other potentially to, to get your bubble level straight. But we're gonna try our best to hit it off the gate. Oh my God. I keep missing it from my All right, perfect, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> we got it guys. All right, so right now the bubble level is perfectly even. Um, we'll use the 25 inch pounds just at the end once I start to get it to tighten down a little bit more. Tighten it up before we torque it. Yeah, so we're gonna, I, I'm really anal about this. I literally go like quarter turns mm -hmm. the whole way through the process. Slow is fast. And uh, don't get, I go to the I go to the front now too. You want to always keep switching forward and rear. You want everything to be even. Now this is this is an LPVO on a 16 inch AR. I'm not too 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 worried about um, this being perfectly level. But if this was like an attacker 7 to 35 on one of my precision match guns one degree off level is like 10 inches in the wrong direction at a thousand yards. So we're still pretty close. We're still in that threshold where I'm, I'm happy. So go back to the first set of rings and give it a little bit more torque.
Okay, we're staying level. <laughs> Everything's level, the gaps are right. Yep, the gaps look good. And yes, always check your the gap, the air gap between the left and right side of your glass as you use. This is a nice, this is a decent mount. And this is a, a loophole factory mount. Mark 3 HD. Mark 3 HD. So we're starting to get into uh, the area where I'll be um, confident to put the torque limiter on pretty soon. It moved just a little bit. Why don't you go back and tighten some others? It might move back. Yeah, all right. Such an exciting video. We'll cut this part down. We can? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, we're close enough. It's. I can talk about the uh, torque value to list on the website. Oh, actually, it is absolutely perfect because this bubble level was off by a hair. To fill in those gaps if you want to. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, we can do voiceovers too. That too. Sure. So, I mean, I can just add it. Well, we'll do it when we start torquing. Sure. All right. So, I'm actually ready to start torquing. So, I'm going to do that. Yep. Ooh. Magnetic. <laughs> Ooh. So when torquing to spec using the fix-it sticks, it, all of manufacturers that are out there should have their torque specs and values listed when you purchase your product. If you're unsure, um, maybe you tossed your packaging and whatnot, uh, if you go to the fix-it sticks website under learn, we actually have a, what we call a living document that's gonna be torque specs for the majority of the most popular manufacturers out there. And it's all in alphabetical order going down. So just scroll down to find, in this case, L for Leupold. And this will tell you for the tactical, what the torque specs are and for hunting rifle mounts. So easy way to just make sure when it's coming to this here, you'll turn until you just start to hear and feel the clicking you'll start to go, it's a slip and clutch mechanism, so it's actually gonna ratchet. Awesome, so we're just there. The mounting of that one. <laughs> Ooh, that went less painful than I thought it would be. Now we're just gonna simply remove it from the scope base and then we'll mount it on the rifle with the 65 pound torque limiter. Inch pounds also, make sure. Inch pounds, not foot pounds. Yes. 65 foot pounds we're putting on a trailer hitch. Okay. <laughs> we just discovered. <laughs> Oh no, I did that on, on the way there. I just, uh, I just had to loosen them up. And yes, they have this beautiful little swivel action on their tool, so you don't have to sit there and hit yourself all the way. We do have ratcheting variations as well. So we'll grab the weapon system. And do it like that. Clear. We've got this little guy here. Um, one mounting glass, if you guys have never done it before. If you want to mess with your length of pull, remember that all the way out for me is pretty much where I want it. So where my arm at the 90 bends, the stock will sit to where my arm is. And uh, we're just going to look at um, We'll look at any of the silhouetting and make sure that the optic is where I where I would want it to when I'm pressed into the gun. Lean forward a little bit, not too much. Lean back, that's really nice. The nice thing about this optic is even if you're a little, your, your eye relief, even if you're a little far on your eye relief or a little close, it has a really nice FOV. 
so you're not really fighting that. Whereas some of the more precision glass, you're you're fighting yourself. Yeah, the eye relief is going to be more precise as opposed to something like this, which will give you a little bit more forgivability. And so maybe I can rotate the rifle this way. How about you do this one? So Certainly. We can get a nice little view on it. So we'll start on the back side. Even though the torque limiter is on, I'm not going to go to spec yet. So I'm going to just bring these in snug. And you're working outside in Correct. on the screws. So I went back to front and then back and forth is how I'm going. So just as we did the cross pattern on the top caps, we're going to work similarly here. It gives even pressure and you'll get the best torque values out of everything. So now we're going to go to spec. Sounds like my ankles in the morning. <laughs> there it went, you heard that? Yep. Oh, we hit it all though. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one. And, and sometimes don't get confused. Um, you know, melanided or uh, black oxided hardware into aluminum sometimes does make a squeaky noise when you are torquing down stuff. So yes, uh, keep true. in mind there's multiple different noises that you will hear. So um, one thing that is not fix it stick fix it stick related is everyone always asks what I like to use for a, um, a laser bore sighter, and I have the laser light laser bore sighter kit. It's, it simply goes in the muzzle, and I'll show you guys, because this is what we're gonna do with this glass. But there is a... Oh, I will lose you, guy. So it's got threaded, um, three-prong threaded inserts that go into the back of it, and you just unscrew it. And since we're putting in a 22 caliber insert into the end, it's got a little taper that flares the plastic in the back. This has been my most successful laser bore sighter across the board for, um, for use. And, and simply, you'll, you'll have to go a couple goes at it, but it's still too tight. So you put this into the end of the muzzle. It's got a little battery, a little switch and a battery in the front. And, uh, after uh, Josh has concluded the video with me, I'll go out into the shop when it's empty and the guys aren't working. And we have about 40 yards across the shop here. And I'll put this in a tipped in gun vise with this laser bore sighter. And the mud is gonna turn on for me so you can see. And um, I'm gonna go in the shop on a tipped in gun vise, put it on a shelf and aim it across the building and I'm just gonna dial my turrets to zero it on this red dot. And then when I take it to the range, I can do a harder zero on it. Um, and depending on, this is a one to four. If you're running LPVO on a 16 inch gun, this gun has a Amdal Ucon with an RMR offset. I prefer to take these to hundred yards and then these to 50 yards. So you do have your 50 yard uh, offset for that quick target acquisition. And then you have your four power uh, zero to 100. And if you were to have a laser device on this for night vision, um, the reason why LPVOs at 100 yards are nice because you can do an infinite zero up in the sky at mm -hmm. nighttime. So you aim your laser up at the sky and you move your laser to meet your reticle. Uh, I don't think this, this is not, this is a non-illuminated reticle, so obviously you wouldn't be doing that with this, but an illuminated reticle like a attacker mm -hmm. uh, one to eight from night force, you would, excuse me, you would converge your laser zero onto your glass zero and do it like that. So that's the cool part about lasers and LPVOs, but having the capabilities between them. What the hell? Bunch of glue. <laughs> from, from a loop pull that just peeled off onto the lens. Why anyway, not? So there you have it. Uh, a Wonder 4 is mounted on a cantilever onto an AR platform. Uh, very quickly, that take us 10 minutes tops with <laughs> fussing with the table. Um, anyway, there's that. <laughs>